And if men of God don't stand up, then our society's gonna go go down the drain. I watched it and I was like, whoa, do we want to go there, Morgan? It seems like whenever modesty, bikinis, <laughs> women's modesty is brought up. <laughs> What's up guys, how you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. In today's video, Christian man rebukes a group of college age girls for their immodest swimwear at a beach. It's a video that went viral on TikTok. It's actually a two part video. The guys responded, it's just a lot. Actually, one of our patrons sent this to me and said, would you guys wanna do a response to it? It seems like whenever women's modesty is brought up, <laughs> The claws come out. The claws come out on both sides, like believers and non-believers. Oh yeah, oh 100%. So it's like, do we want to, but as I thought just more on this viral video that we're gonna be playing some clips of, I just think it's interesting. Like it's an interesting talk about, especially Christians. But before we get into that, make sure you subscribe, turn that notification bell on so you know when we go live yeah. or when we drop a new video. We make videos on culture and social issues from a Christian perspective to help you have hope and be free. Quick shout out to our patrons. We could not do what we're doing on this channel without you guys. Thank you so much for your monthly support and pouring into yeah. what we're doing. Truly, you guys encourage us to keep going when things get hard, so we love you all. And stay tuned because as soon as we get all of our merch orders shipped out and done we're gonna be focusing on having a movie night with our patrons on discord let's, so stay tuned for yeah, that i'm ready to go so let's let's make it happen really soon you can go to patreon.com slash paul and morgan show or click the link below to join and be a part of that movie night all right morgan Who? where do we get started on let's just say what happened and then we'll jump right into some video clips okay so picture this you guys you have a family at the beach. It looks like a lake, like a beach, a sandy beach at a lake. Okay, got it. Yeah, you got that? You with me <laughs> so was, far? Yeah, it's a lake beach. <laughs> lake beach. You have this guy that looks like he's in his mid 20s maybe, Logan Dorn. His, I guess, family group, there's there's like, he said there's an eight year old, a six year old. I don't know if it's maybe like extended family or what, mm -hmm. but his family group ends up getting up and leaving to a different spot on the beach because of a group of college aged girls, women, wearing what he calls immodest bikinis or immodest swimwear. Someone in his group said, can we move spots? I just don't want my kids to be around girls that are dressed like this right now. So then Logan proceeds to walk over to the group of girls. He, he just kind of calls them out. Confronts them. And so let's just get into the clip. Why do you dress this way? Dude, I'm hot and I like women, so please leave us alone. Well, Kindly. Well, take, take young I'm at the beach in take, my bathing take, suit. Yeah, that's, that's a thong and that's a bra. That is a Take suit, young sir. eyes into consideration. They don't need to see pornography right We're not coming up to you bothering you. Please go away. You're flaunting your stuff. The video that this girl has taken on her phone, it, it continues, but really, at least for the first minute and a half, it's just kind of more of that. He never gets, like, he never raises his voice or anything like that. He's just, like, trying to have a conversation. Obviously, the topic of conversation is very confrontational, but... I'm glad that he never raised his voice. Nevertheless. If anyone was yelling, it was the girls. Nevertheless, just the fact of this man on a beach going up to a group mm -hmm. of college-age girls, it is a little... Right off the bat. It's a little abrasive. And as you guys would expect, it seems like just the multitudes are siding with these girls and just lambasting the guy. Um, he ended up getting fired from his Christian... I believe, construction company. So, I mean, it's the real implications to this video and to what went down. Just from the first chunk of this altercation, is there a place for a Christian guy to approach strangers and call them out, I guess? Oh. It makes me think of the, the street preachers or mm -hmm. campus preachers who have the microphone and nothing's really off limits. They are yeah. preaching the hard gospel. They're calling people out that are walking by them. And that's like a whole nother topic, which yeah. I <laughs> have mixed, I have some mixed feelings on. Mm -hmm. I see kind of both sides of it. Yeah. I don't know. Immediately, just off the bat, watching him walk up to these young women, this 
man, stranger. I'm not very comfortable with that. <laughs> I don't know. He mentions, and we'll show this a little bit later in a follow-up video that his fiance actually was thinking about these women. They were on her mind. They were my, on her heart. Yeah. And my thought is, why didn't she go up to them? Oh. I feel like that would have been way more appropriate. Still could have been very awkward, but woman to woman coming up and not even maybe even addressing like, hey, what you're wearing, but just being like, hey, I just wanted to let you know Jesus died on the cross for you for your sins. Sharing the gospel with them. Not even pointing out their bikinis and their immodesty, whatever. Like letting the Lord work on that in their hearts. And I'm not saying that there's not a time to be like forceful. You guys know that we have been and are on our channel. But for me, for like total strangers going after them and talking talking to them almost like you believe that they're sisters in Christ and you have no idea and then they all said like oh I'm an atheist I'm an atheist blah, blah. and if men of God don't stand oh up then our society's gonna go oh, go down the drain because there's no morality. I'm atheist sorry yeah, same. If you're, okay that, 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 that's if you're an atheist that doesn't mean you have to you know show your body off you can still put clothes on oh, I can't with you <laughs> It's like, well, at okay. least we heard one of them say that. We heard, uh, it seems like several of them are cu curse the cursing very... And yeah, so it's like there is a different way that you are supposed to love um, an unbeliever and a way to challenge. And, you know, Paul talks about judging, making a righteous judgment towards people in the church, in the faith. The Apostle Paul. I think that there is a, a way to handle it. And I don't know if he handled it very well. Two things. Shortly before filming this video, I got on his TikTok. He had taken down several videos talking about what had happened and actually just had one video up and it was him making an apology and saying what he kind of wished would have happened. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get that out there. Now to your point about the Apostle Paul saying, we're called to, to judge those inside the church, but not so much outside. One element of that is he's saying like, those inside the church, we actually have some control over. If they're living in blatant, unrepentant sin, we can kick them out of the church. But those outside the church, like, you know, they're, they're not in the church. Mm -hmm. um, but you do see some examples in scripture uh, the example of Jonah going to Nineveh and literally going from one side of the city to the other saying, you guys got to repent. You think of John the Baptist with King Herod where he goes and he says, hey, you need to stop sleeping with your uh, brother's wife, is it? Because that's against the law. I think there are times to do that. Mm -hmm. This situation is a little bit more difficult because what's he doing? He's calling out immodest swimwear. I think there's a little more gray area with that. One thing is, before we play this next clip, I feel like he's he's being honest and that he's saying, guys, I'm coming over here. I'm compelled to, to call you guys out because there's kids here. I, I have, there's an eight-year-old kid, a six-year-old kid, and I want to protect them. Mm -hmm. But again, you're bringing kids to a beach. You know, keep them at your your private house pool. You only have so much protection you're able to do. Yeah. But at the same time, is there any standard at a public place where, you know, you should be able to bring something up? Oh, I don't know. That's just such a sticky situation because, in my opinion, what I can do is... Personally, I can just teach my children. Guys, there's going to be times when you're out in public and there are people who are wearing things or saying things that, like, we don't agree with or align with. And you have to learn how to not let that be a heavy weight on you. You brush that off and you move on. You get away from it if you can. Lean on the Holy Spirit for strength. I don't know. Use it as a teaching tool, but you can't really expect hmm. the people of the world to <laughs> like, I guess I just, live like you want them to live. <laughs> I know you have so many people attacking him. And when we made our Christian guys modesty video, and I'll link that video below, and it was our first video to blow up, and we just saw masses of people, Christians and not, mm -hmm. coming after us saying, men don't have any rights to talk about this. You guys are judgy, blah, blah, blah. You at least, it would seem that he is looking after whether it's his nephews or whatever, this this eight-year-old boy, this six-year-old boy, he talks about his own struggle of uh, being exposed to porn at a young age. So he, it seems like he has this protective thing yeah. coming out. And I appreciate that because I know he's going to get attacked with, oh, well, and the girls even said, you should, you should... Uh, gouge your eyes out. Gouge your eyes out. I think it, it's more 
it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about these young people, yeah. these kids. Yeah. Let's play the next clip. Come a day when you're gonna come face to face with God. And he says it's better for a milk. Did you know God said do not judge? He said it's better. He said it's better for a milk. Oh, and if you find someone's body distracting, then gouge your eyes out. Oh, I always think it's funny when someone is like, "I'm an atheist," and then they start quoting the Bible. You could kind of tell there that he was starting to say the verse whoever causes one of these little ones to sin it would be better if a millstone was tied around their neck and thrown into the sea he's kind of using that to say like you guys are gonna have to give an account before god but i just feel like he's his his calling them out is his words are landing on soil that is not receptive at all mm -hmm. so it's kind of like it does now moving into more scripture and maybe more of the gospel message i, I don't know exactly what was happening there but if it's falling on deaf ears, if they've rejected it, how far do you want to continue to try to make something happen? It seems clear that they are making fun of him. They're cursing at him. They yeah. do not want any part of this. Yeah, they don't, they're not hearing anything he's saying and they're laughing at everything he says. I wish that he would have just kept it really simple and walked away. Yeah. For me, it, it was uncomfortable that he stood there for as long as he did. It's a good point. Especially because these young girls said, please, like, please go away. I did hear them say that at the very beginning. They said, please go and away. And he made the comment about like, this is, you know, we have free speech. Yeah. But I agree with you. That just felt, at that point, they're rejecting what you're, you have to say and you're in their space, kind of. Right. You're not honoring these young women who are saying, like, please go away. And to me, that's very uncomfortable and not okay because I'm a woman and I've had to ask a man to go away and he didn't. And it's a very uncomfortable uh, feeling to deal with. I, I definitely hear that. It's, it's one thing if maybe, like, girls are coming up into your space and you're proclaiming the gospel message out in public or something but when right. you are literally going up to them mm -hmm. they are saying we don't want to mm -hmm. hear this and you remain there it just gets uncomfortable if you want to be tactful and i've seen you know street evangelism where they ask for permission and they're able to start mm -hmm. kind of sharing the gospel on ears that are receptive definitely like by all means but Again, that felt kind of icky. Yeah. And he does. And again, he makes a video apologizing for how it went down. So mm -hmm. I want to give him credit for that. But yeah. still, this happened. It yeah. happened how it happened. And that was disappointing to see that. It's interesting because Paul and I hate cancel culture. And I do not believe that he should have gotten fired from his job. I think that's absolutely appalling and ridiculous, in my opinion. Especially knowing that it's a Christian construction company and they're literally firing this guy. Like, he made a mistake. Come on, bros, company, let's forgive. Maybe and they'll hire him back after his apology. Yeah, I would really hope so. I hope that you guys do. Cancel culture is one thing. But there is a t there there are times that you need to come out and you need to apologize and we'll get to his apology but I don't know if he necessarily needed to apologize for a few things that he apologized for. He's probably getting waves of just hate mm -hmm. that he's never experienced in his life, never thought that it could happen to him and yeah. now it is and yeah. he's like I just got fired from my job. I'm getting incredible because I saw that he turned off his comments on his TikTok. He's mm -hmm. just like what do I do? I'm going to go ahead and, and go a little the extra mile in my apology. And so I get that for sure, but only apologize for what you need to apologize for. So let's jump over to now the guy talking on his Instagram. So I believe he, he made this video a couple days ago, a few days ago, addressing the situation, and then we'll play his apology after. So right then and there, I just had a, uh, just a righteous anger come over me. Um, and also just a, a boldness by the Holy Spirit to go in to confront these ladies and to speak truth that, hey, what you're wearing is not okay for a nine-year-old boy or a six-year-old boy. Reason being is because coming from being introduced to pornography at a young age, it destroyed me. And I, in that moment, just a righteous anger of to defend and protect um, young eyes. I'll be honest, I kind of, I hear that. If I had been exposed to porn, at the age of eight and it had just you know for years wrecked me mm -hmm. and then i'm looking at my you know nephew or whatever we're at a beach and i see him looking at girls that are just dressed very immodestly i would be like oh it would it would it would get me yeah i do get that but you know what can you do okay you can go address those women but it's like are you gonna follow this eight-year-old for the rest of his life and go confront every woman 
Or are you going to teach this young eight-year-old, here's how we fight these temptations? Teaching him how to rely on the Holy Spirit the same for time, strength. At the same time, he, he's eight. Right. He's, he's six. We know five-year-olds who have been baptized and received the Lord and the Spirit. Part of your, your job as a protector, and I don't know, you know, the situation here. I don't know if the eight-year-old was like his nephew, if it was his... I don't think he has any kids. But but there is a, a level of, I'm, I'm protecting this, this person. I'm not saying going up to the girls is right. Maybe it's just we're moving to a different spot on the beach. Right. I'm protecting this kid by going to a different spot. I'm protecting this kid by... Let's go to a private pool. That's normally <laughs> what, what you would do. That's what most people would do. He's saying that he felt, what, emboldened? He felt a righteous anger, an mm -hmm. emboldenment by the Holy Spirit. I know so many people would hear that and immediately scoff at it. I don't want to be quick to do that. It said in, I think it was the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit came on just this, this group of believers, the early church, it emboldened them to go preach the gospel with boldness. Mm -hmm. But he didn't necessarily do that. But he, <laughs> it was it was like in his zeal, he just kind of blah. Yeah. And, so it was like, okay, yes, recognize your righteous anger. Now go to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit how to go, go about it. Yeah. And he says in his apology video, he did feel the Holy Spirit lead him to go speak to those women, but he didn't say what he should have said. Let's jump into his apology. And so I just want to come before the world and come before, first and foremost, the ladies at the beach and say, I'm sorry. I apologize. I repent. I'm sorry the way I came off as judgmental and angry and condemning. You see, that's not Jesus's heart. Like I said, yes, apologize, but only apologize for what you need to apologize And that's, for. that's what I'm saying. Was he going Is he maybe being a little overboard? Maybe. Again, like there was no yelling, Philip DeFranco, with your timestamp guy yells at group of <laughs> college, whatever. There was no yelling, but yes, looking at it, watching that, it's like, I, I think that the apology was a good move. But hey, I fully believe that the Lord is good and he can take what is bad and turn it for good. And so whether that's yeah. just in this guy's heart and he's just going to work on Logan's heart and his walk and just deepening his walk and, and strength in the Lord, awesome, praise God. Or he planted some seeds through this apology. And I... I don't know. I, I do not want to, again, because you just, you get these floods of people condemning, condemning, saying everything he did was awful. He is blah, blah, blah. Like I watched several videos from him. He seems sincere. He seems to truly love the Lord. And maybe he's got some immaturities. Sure. We all got immaturities. Maybe his are more glaring. Fair enough. Maybe they're more severe. Fair enough. But nevertheless, he seems like he sincerely has a walk for the Lord. And I, I kind of want to commend people that are bold. Mm -hmm. and that are bold in sharing their faith. And for all of us saying, he did it terribly. Sure, maybe it wasn't great, but do you share your faith? Are you looking for opportunities to be bold, to tell someone about Jesus? Learn from his mistakes and go be bold. My mom, before she was saved, she told this guy that she was friends with a, a perverted joke. And he said, hey, like, can you please not tell me that? I don't, I don't want to hear a perverted joke. That was judgy or that was kind of confrontational. And that really <laughs> stuck with her and that planted the seed. This guy's different. And she ended up getting saved. And I think that was literally part of her testimony. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to just cool. throw everything about this whole situation and say it's all garbage and you're judgy and this isn't what Jesus would do and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of over that side of things. Yeah. And when we, again, made our Christian Modesty Bikinis video, so many people, oh, this is judgy. This isn't the way to do it. And we're just being real and honest and encouraging women to dress modestly. There's wisdom in that. And you could you could dive all into that topic, but I'm just simply saying like there is a place to encourage the body of Christ to walk in holiness and there's a place to preach the gospel to non-believers. All right, guys. So Morgan and I shared our opinions, shared where we're at with this. Comment below. I'm very curious to hear where you guys have landed with this topic. Logan calls out the girls wearing their bikinis at the beach. Let us know, comment below, keep the combo going. Show some love, <laughs> give it a thumbs up for Squishy. All right guys, we love you all very much. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We will catch you again very soon. Have hope. And be free. Eh. Ooh. 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 Ooh.